Hi, my name is Chen Shusun uh, from Omni Vision Sensor Solutions. Uh, we are formerly known as Stellapixel. Uh, since May 2020, uh, we became part of Wheel Semiconductor. Uh, in this, this talk, uh, I will introduce uh, the recent progress on event based sensor uh, and the algorithm in our company. In particular, I will discuss uh, the time step accuracy issue uh, in detail. Uh, our event based sensor Silex family has been evolved to generation six. In 2018, we developed a 1 million uh, pixel sensor with a pitch of 9.8. This year, soon we are going to launch a new one uh, with 2 million pixels. Uh, it was designed using 65 nanometer uh, two wafer hybrid bonding process. Uh, it's called, also called the 3D stack process. Uh, each pixel uh, had a footprint of 5.6 micrometer. Uh, the max readout speed uh, is 200 mega events per second. So under some special cases, uh, for example, if the whole row of pixels fire together uh, using some group encoding techniques, we can pack them together and achieve an equivalent speed of one giga event per second. Uh, we also build some new features, such as a, a dynamic uh, event rate detector, uh, which works together with uh, advanced power manager so that we can dynamically change the rate of the speed to save power. Uh, this sensor is mainly designed for smart home surveillance applications, so where it needs uh, low power, uh, low latency, and privacy. Uh, in such applications, it does not need very high temporal resolution, so this sensor only offers uh, off-pixel time step. Uh, here is the architecture uh, of the sensor. It includes the, the core part. Uh, ESP, and also the standard output interfaces. Uh, we have been offering uh, the standard interface such as R2C, SPI, MIP, and Sense Select 5, uh, which can communicate with any processor with a MIP bus. Uh, so MIP had been uh, traditionally designed for frame-based sensor. So in order to work with event-based sensor, uh, we build a event packer in the ESP. Uh, which can assemble the events into packets so that the MIPI protocol can uh, recognize it. Uh, in the previous workshop, we introduced the architecture of the uh, pixel. Here, I would like to uh, have a quick recap. The main building blocks including uh, includes a log photo detector, uh, which converts uh, photo current into a log voltage. So after a filter amplifier, the AC changes uh, of the voltage will be compared to a window comparator. And if any one of them is flipped, so an event is generated and then memorized by an uh, in-pixel uh, memory, uh, which in fact a uh, one-bit register. So the event is also used to sample and hold uh, the log voltage, okay, the log, log voltage into this capacitor. Uh, and also, we can build another cap to memorize a uh, ramp voltage, which in fact encodes uh, the global time step. Uh, we call this a uh, in pixel time step. So, in Select 5, uh, we only build one capacitor. Uh, using MOX, we can choose either to export uh, the uh, log intensity or the in pixel time step. So, if the fabrication process allows, we can build two capacitors. So the two information can be obtained together. During the past two years, we more and more realized the importance of in-pixel time step in certain applications. Uh, so therefore, I would like to make some highlight here. So in ideal event sensor, the pixel will fire event when it detects enough change. Okay, so for example here, the voltage starts from uh, this point. So when the voltage uh, change reaches the threshold, the event is generated, and we're going to think that it will be processed immediately. So after that, it will start a new round of detection. 
So when there are few pixels fired simultaneously, it's true that the latency is very minimal and it can be ignored. The behavior of the sensor is close to this ideal model. Uh, however, when there are many pixels fired at the same time, so we have to consider non-idealities. This includes uh, the in-pixel latency, uh, which refers to the time it takes for the front end photo detector to follow the change in light and then produce a, a log voltage. Uh, this delay is light dependent. Uh, it can be in the range of uh, a few microseconds to a few milliseconds. The second is the delay related to the readout. Okay, so suppose the event uh, is generated at this point, and then it will be put in the uh, readout pipeline and waiting to be uh, uh, readout. So uh, the delay between the two uh, is called readout delay. And after the uh, event is read out, uh, then the pixel will uh, go into a refractory state. So after the, at the end of a ref refractory period, so the pixel got uh, re-initialized and start a new round of detection. Uh, so usually the off pixel time step is assigned at the point when the uh, pixel is read out. So there is a, a difference between the point uh, that it fired and the point uh, it would read out. So uh, the readout uh, delay uh, depends on how fast uh, the readout uh, circuits and also how many pixels are waiting to be read out. So usually the uh, refractory uh, delay is controllable. Okay but the read of the delay is kind of random. Uh, so the real model becomes uh, something like this. So compared to the uh, ideal model, we note that uh, there are some events uh, are missing. Uh, so the commonly we use the time step approach uh, of pixel time step. So in this model, uh, basically the event is fire here and then uh, processed here. So the off pixel time step is designed at this moment. Uh, so as I said, there are the error between the two. So using in pixel time step, uh, we, we can memorize this moment and trace it back uh, after readout. Let me use the example to further explain this. This axis is timeline. There are two motion objects, the blue one and the red one. If there is enough time gap between the two motions, the sensor can well differentiate the two and earlier fired pixel will have earlier time step. However, if the two motions get closer in time, the read of the sequence becomes unpredictable. And in fact, that can be random. Using off pixel time step may not be able to differentiate the sequence of the two motions. The problem is that when the second motion happens, uh, the scanner, it can be at any um, place, okay? In this uh, particular example, we can see that when the red motion happens, uh, the scanner is at this rule. So uh, some pixels on the red motion, uh, like 54 or 55 pixels, they can get attention uh, you know, immediately. So the delay is very minimal. Uh, however, for some other pixels of the red motion, they have to wait. So until the scanner finish a whole round of scanning and come back. So some pixels, uh, in particular the three, they experience a worst case delay. So they have to wait uh, the scanner finish a whole round of scanning. So in some cases, the delay can be very long, can be millisecond. Uh, so, so this is the main disadvantage of off pixel time step. So how can we improve uh, the accuracy of off pixel time step? Basically, there are two ways. One is that we have to use faster read up speed. So that's why we can see that 
you know, the suppliers of event based essential companies, they are trying to uh, increase the readout bandwidth so that it will take less time to finish a whole round of scanning. Secondly, uh, we should use sequential scan versus the uh, random scan. So since CLX4, we began to use a sequential scanner to replace the uh, random arbiters uh, because we realized that the random arbiter can have a random long uh, delay. Okay. Uh, in terms of uh, algorithm, we recently developed a full event-driven human-computer interaction system. The system features a very low latency and low computational cost, uh, which can achieve uh, 80 hertz throughput on the ARM uh, Cortex E8 CPU. The system includes uh, three parts. First, uh, initializer. So we just need to uh, wave your hands uh, to the camera. So the system will got uh, initialized. Uh, this is a very natural way. Uh, secondly, uh, the tracker. The tracker will update the hand position uh, based on the maximum event density. So next slide, I will show you the idea. So uh, we use the event density instead of a conventional feature matching method. Uh, we know that the event camera can capture the complete trajectory of more motion hand uh, uh, moving hand clearly uh, using even the density, uh, the computational cost is very low. Uh, thirdly, uh, based on the track imputation, so events within a space time 3D volume will be down sampled and passed into a classifier, uh, which call it uh, uh, a space time event net. Uh, the key idea of the classifier is to learn features from uh, temporal local region instead of geometric local regions. So as we know that uh, the most straightforward way to, uh, to model the event streams, we can use like a 3D uh, event cloud, so FYT. So where the T is, is similar to the, uh, to the Z axis in the XYZ space. Uh, so the straightforward way to recognize the gesture is similar to recognize uh, an object uh, using it's a 3D uh, kind of point cloud. So in other words, to recognize uh, it's a geometric distribution. Uh, however, in this approach, so the event cloud are modeled at unordered 3D points. Uh, so it only contains uh, some uh, Euclidean local features. Uh, in our method, uh, local features are extracted from uh, temporal local regions uh, instead of uh, the geometric uh, local regions. Uh, the event sequence itself contains the information of how a gesture changes over time. So the key part of the network uh, is the number of uh, space time kernels, uh, and the length of the kernel determines uh, how many events are considered uh, in, in time. So this is the idea of the event uh, tracker, also the initializer. Uh, so you can see that uh, uh, the density of the uh, of the motion. Yeah. Uh, we train the system to recognize four defined gestures and one open class uh, of random gestures. Uh, this includes a uh, weave up and down, left and right. Uh, clockwise and anti-clockwise. Uh, this table shows uh, our method uh, is very efficient. Uh, we consider events uh, among uh, half a second and then uh, uh, downsample them into 256 uh, events. Uh, here is the application level demonstration. Uh, we integrate the system into a smart TV and use the hand gesture to uh, select the menu and control the TV. We also develop a hybrid attention assessment system uh, using CI and EVS. So the first step is pixel-wide collaboration. 
So EVS is responsible for eye localization and blink feature detection. And CIS is used to detect the big landmarks and also uh, hand tools. Uh, so we can detect the well well of the eye blinking. And we uh, use uh, CIS uh, as an assistance. And the CIS can only, uh, we, we need the CIS only work at a very low speed of five uh, FPS. So this means that we can uh, also achieve very low computation cost. So thank you for your attention. So if you would like to purchase our evaluation case, so please contact us uh, through this email.